So there, there's a journalist, Jonathan Liu, in The Guardian, you may know him, who wrote a, a line that stuck in mm. my head. He said, this plan could only have been devised by people who hate football. I don't know what, whether you had a stronger reaction, but what, what were your thoughts when the uh, Super League announcement was made? Well, I'm talking to you from Spain, John. So, okay. Um, let me give you a perspective from here. The, the, the prime mover behind all this, the initial force, the strategist, going back 20 years, is the longtime president of Real Madrid, Sorrentino Perez. He is the guy who has really been agitating for this, and I know because I, I, I wrote a book about him um, some years ago, and I got to know him well. Anyway, um, the thing is this, that for him, he doesn't, and, and to, to tie with what you're just saying about what Jonathan Dune said about hating football, he, he, his love of football is reduced to his love of Real Madrid. He yes. thinks only of the welfare of his club. You know, there are Real Madrid fans and Barcelona fans and Manchester United fans who will watch games involving other teams simply for the love of the game. I mean, I've got a friend here in Barcelona who was watching mad Barcelona fans, was watching Leeds Liverpool the other night. Right. But Jordi de Beres would never, would never watch a game like that unless, unless perhaps he was contemplating buying one of their players. Right. So I think that's, that's, one, that's one important thought from, like I say, from the absolute prime mover of this whole thing. And the people that he latched onto, that he that really most enthusiastically got involved with this project with him, were the owners of Liverpool and Manchester United, who are both American investors, who, again, may not hate football, but they don't love it. Yes. The way that, you know, 4,000 million people around the world do. And I think that the key thought that Florentino Perez didn't get and, and, and these other owners of these big clubs didn't get is that football, sure, it's big business, but for the thousands of millions of people who love the game, it's actually something close to a religion. You know, all these thousands of millions of people that, who are regarded as financial or commercial entities by these club owners, they're not. They're, they're religious faithful. You know, it's a secular religion, sure. Yes, yes. But they're religious faithful. They're, they're souls. There's a soul here in football. And that side of things... These guys failed to understand. News. Experts. Analysis. Where things stand. What you need to know. Drive home with John Pullman. On 702.